I would gather up all these little children and take us to Sunday school and we would stay in Sunday school and they would teach us about the things of the Lord and, and I remember one day going to Sunday school and, and there was this picture just like in this room here of Jesus and, and there was fish and it said I will make you fishers of men well you know my little mind couldn't understand that how can we be fishers of men we catch fish and you know, the Lord was dealing with me at that time. And I'll never forget him. Oh, when I got baptized at that time, I had four brothers and two sisters. It was six of us in the family. And we got baptized that time. And they brought us all out outside in, in the sanctuary and we was just dripping wet you know how it is and after you have the baptism up here and you know what they baptized you in the name of the father you go down once in the name of the son you go down twice in the name of the holy ghost and you go down three times oh the first time sister Hammonds hallelujah when I was in that water the first time there was Jesus at the end of the pool with his arms outstretched and I want you to know he loved me from that time on then they dunked me a second time and there was Jesus again with his arms outstretched oh and then the third time he dunked me oh I want you to know there was Jesus right up in my face and everywhere that I went from that time forward brother Benazer I could not see any peace I could not find any joy in my sin and you know why because everywhere I look there was Jesus with his hands outstretched. There was Jesus in the trees. There was Jesus when I was riding a motorcycle. There was Jesus when I was sinning with his arms outstretched. Hallelujah. And I knew, I knew then that he had a purpose for me. But I couldn't comprehend it as a child. And the blood of Jesus, oh, got a hold of me at a very young age. But it wasn't until in 1977 that the church had got a prophecy in Galax, Virginia, that I got saved at a home prayer meeting. And I want you to know I had an encounter with the Lord. And the blood of Jesus, oh, started me down a journey, a journey that I had never, never gotten over and I'm 64 years old and I was 24 when I first really got saved but in reality I think I got saved at 8, or eight, eight years old when I got baptized hallelujah because when you see Jesus and, and when you have an encounter with a theophany a theophany that's Jesus Christ in him personified and I had that encounter in church that's what God is wanting in these last days God God is wanting us uh, to have an encounter with him uh, like we've never had before because I want you to know um, we're in a situation we're in a time that we need a revival for our survival you and I are in the last great conflict for our souls. We're in the last great conflict for the souls of men. And church, the only way that we're going to win this battle and win this conflict is that we must get back to having a revival. A revival. A revival. Paul said, I don't come to you with excellency of speech, but I come to you and the power and the demonstration of the Holy Ghost. We need Holy Ghost and fire oh, to be among us today. We need that fire of conviction. That fire that's going to break the yoke. All oh, the yoke's not going to be broke off of the necks of sinners unless it anointed them. That anointed word is going to break the yoke and church them. When the early reformers when the early reformers were out there, hallelujah, Amen. praise the Lord. You're going to have to help me here. This little thing don't want to stay on. I ain't never had one of these. I've had an interpreter before. Hallelujah, praise the Lord. Glory to God. God is wanting to do something wonderful in these last days. But it's going to be up to you and I. 
to line up with what he says do. A revival doesn't come in a suitcase. A revival doesn't come from going down to the church and just doing whatever. But it takes prayer. It takes getting into intercessory prayer with the Lord and the Holy Ghost and groanings that cannot be uttered. Oh, have you ever prayed before with such groaning in your spirit? that the words would not come forth. You didn't know how to put it into words, but the groaning that was inside of you, oh, the Holy Ghost knows. And church, it's going to take, oh, it's going to take us back to getting to neology instead of so much theology. Now we need the theology, but we also need the, we need neology. It's going to get us on our prayers and in our prayer closet and talking to God once again. Oh, when I get excited, I get tongue-tied. Pray for me. Pray for me that I can slow down because i got to get this said. A revival for our survival. How many of you know that we need to be revived today? We need to be revived today in the things that we used to know. Hallelujah. He said to walk, seek out the old paths and walk therein, which is a good way. Hallelujah. It doesn't mean we have to ride horses and buggies. It doesn't mean we have to go without electricity. But it means to seek out the word, to seek out the old ways and walk therein. The Lord God does not change. He has not changed since the day that he started this program and he has not changed today. And God is still requiring man oh, to come to him and to seek him for what we need. Church, there's a lost world out there and if you are not revived and if you're not full of the Holy Ghost, then guess what? You're not going to have much to give anybody. If you come every Sunday morning and, and, and you got just a little bitty cup and you say, Lord, here's my cup. I lift it up. And you get just enough in that cup. Oh, just put a little here, a little here. Oh, I just did my religious duty. And then some have a bigger cup. And they say, Lord, here's my cup. And they want a little bit more. Oh, but church, we need to have a bucket this size. Oh, that is immersed in the Spirit of the Lord. So that when we get full of the Holy Ghost in power, that when we go out there and we come across somebody that's sick and afflicted, when we come across somebody that's in sin, oh, the way that we were, I can and honestly say silver and gold have I none but such as I have such as I have I pour it out and give to you because of the power of God that's in me it works to it works according to the power that is in you how many of you today want that Holy Ghost power? How many of you want that Holy Ghost revival stirring in your soul? Oh, stirring in the heart of who you are. Because Jesus said in these last days, oh, there's going to be great conflict. Perilous times are upon us, church. I'm not a gloom and doom preacher. That's not what I'm here to preach. But the Lord said, I want that revival that you're going to. I want it to start here. I want it to start here in this local church before it ever gets outside of the four walls. Hallelujah. And I want to be obedient to the Lord. I want to be obedient to the Lord. Souls are dying. God is crying. God is saying, who is going to go for me? Who will I send? The harvest, sister. The harvest is already ripe. It's already ripe. It's been ripe now for a long time. But he's looking for people that will lay down their lives and give their lives for the cause of Christ to work in his field. Oh, many of us come. And there's nothing wrong with this. Many of us come and want to get something from the table. Many of us need to be blessed and that's okay. But if you're sitting around the table all the time and you never want to work in the fields... It's time, church, that we pushed away from the table. Hallelujah. And say, Father, I want to work the fields. 
because they are right. They are ripe unto harvest. And church, if we don't bring the harvest in, what happens in the natural when you don't bring the harvest in? It's going to lay out in the field and it'll rot. That's why when the harvest time comes, they pay and get all these people to gather in the harvest and they get all these workers and they work around the clock and they gather in the grain and they work night and day all to gather in the grain. Brother Hargraves was brought up on a farm and he used to have the quirkiest sayings. And me being brought up in the streets of D.C., I never would eat anything that come out of the ground because I thought it was dirty. I got food out of the grocery store. I had no concept where food came from. Growing up in D.C., you just go to the store and buy your food. Well, meeting Brother Hargraves and living in Galax, Virginia, I found out that food comes out of the ground. And you know, for the longest time, I wouldn't eat that food because it was dirty. And I thought, this is not right. Until I met Brother Hargraves. And he started teaching me. And then, of course, I would read the Word. And he'd say, oh, it's time for you to go out there and gather in all the grain and get all you can and then can all you get. I said, what does that mean? Well, he said, honey, when you go out, and you work the field and you gather in the grain, you want to hurry up and you gather in the fruit, you want to hurry up and you want to can it. You want to can everything you get to church. We're living in a time now, oh, not to forsake the assembling of ourselves together as some people do, but as we see the day approaching, come to church, hear the word of exhortation, hear the word of encouragement. Oh, let the Holy Ghost work in us. Let's get all that we can because in these last days we're going to need it. We're going to need it for this great conflict that's coming up for your soul and for the soul of men. And we need the Holy Ghost to reign on us like never before. I don't know about you but I'm excited. I've been excited about this message. I've been excited about this revival because I feel the wind of change Oh, the wind of change is coming, sister. Some to the bad, some to the good. Amen. Jeremiah says, if you can't run in the time of peace with the footman, how are you going to do in the swelling of the Jordan? If you can't run and serve the Lord now when things are conducive and things are good and you have everything that you need, do you honestly think, do you honestly think that when they take away our rights to come to church and take away our Bibles, take away our liberties, take away our finances, do you honestly think you're going to have enough power with God when the swelling of the Jordan comes and that you're going to be able to give your life for the cause of Christ? Come on, church. Come on, church. We're losing. We're losing ground when it comes to letting the Holy Ghost working among us like He used to and like He wants to. This world is under the influence of the Antichrist, the influence of sin influences everywhere. Oh, church, it's time that you and I got under the spout where the glory comes out. It's time that we got under the influence of the Holy Ghost so that we could see people drunk in the Spirit. I used to see people drunk in the Spirit. I used to see people drunk uh, and they would go in the Spirit and they would go from pew to pew to pew and jump from pew to pew. I would see people jump up in the air and spin around like a top uh, when I first got saved and I thought, what kind of madness is this? You see, I wasn't raised in the church. I was raised a Jehovah Witness, and I'm not throwing off on anybody, but that's how I was raised. And they didn't believe in the power of God. So you see, when I came in, and the power of God was here, and that blue haze was in the church, that Shekinah glory, hallelujah. Oh, when you would look around, and you'd have to rub your eyes, Brother Jason, because there was smoke in the room. And I thought, Lord, what is this? Is somebody smoking? What is this? 
And I see people <laughs> loving one another. They go up to one another, cheers rolling down their face under the anointing of the Holy Ghost and hugging one another and saying, Sister, if I've offended you, I'm sorry. Forgive me. And I'd see it go through the congregation. And then I'd see the Spirit of the Lord move and that blue haze. And one day I was coming down off the mountain, which I lived in Galax, Virginia, which is called the Blue Ridge Mountains. And I was coming off the mountain, down this mountain called Rocky Top. And as I was coming off the mountain, I want you to know I looked out uh, over the Blue Ridge Mountains and I was weeping and I was praising the Lord. And the Lord said, you see that blue haze that's on the mountains? He said, that blue haze is my spirit. That's my spirit that you see in the midst of the church. That blue haze was God's spirit. I believe at the time that I got shaved off of a youth revival, I truly believe that the church was right at that time because there was too much power. Too much power. And I know that that same revival spirit that was there with those young people in 1977, God wants it in 2017. Because it's that same spirit that's going to get us through. It's that same spirit that's going to give us a heart to please the Lord. It's that same spirit that's going to say, Lord, here am I. Send me. Here am I. Send me. I want you to know, brother, I heard the Macedonian call at the assembly this year. I heard it before, but you know what? I never heard it like I heard it at at the assembly this year. Oh, during the mission service, something went through me, and the tears swelled up in me, and my self-will just went out the door. The Lord said, Arise and go, for the work is not yet finished. Arise and go. And I said, oh God, how can I go except you open a door? And that's when the Lord dealt with me to do something in the assembly. And I said, Lord, I'll go. Hallelujah. You left me behind for a reason. You didn't take me when Brother Hardgraves, when you took him. But you left me behind for a reason. And sister, I don't know how many days I've got on this earth. But ever how long i got on this earth, I want to please the Lord. And the heart of God is souls. The heart of God is that no man be lost. That every soul would come to know who Jesus Christ is. And through that revelation get a revelation of who his church is and those sheep those other sheep those other sheep are going to come in these last days I believe that you come too late to tell me any different oh praise the Lord praise the Lord turn with me to Revelations 3 and 25 Hallelujah. Revelation 3 and 25. Not Revelation 3 and 25. Revelation 3 and 2 and 3. There is no Revelation 3 and 25, I don't think. But listen here. Revelation 3, 2 and 3. Be watchful and strengthen the things which remain that are ready to die. For I have not found thy works perfect before God. Remember therefore how thou hast received and heard, and hold fast and repent. If there therefore thou shalt not watch, I will come on thee as a thief, and thou shalt not know what hour I will come upon thee. I don't know about you, But I don't want there to be an indictment against me the way that there was an indictment against the seven churches of Asia. Every one of them was listed and every one of them had an indictment against them. But along with the indictment, there was also a remedy. There was also a remedy. And God never, never pours out His judgment except He sends mercy first. God sends mercy first before judgment and wrath comes. He is saying in these hours, it's time for us to wake up. 
It's time for us to arouse and realize uh, that there's still some things in us that remain, but church, uh, they're ready to die. And you know why they're ready to die? Turn with me over into Luke 21. Are you praying for me? Luke 21 and verse 34. Praise the Lord. I was so disturbed Wednesday night at what I heard and saw in our VLB service. Not because of what anybody did, but because of what I saw on that tape and that video said greater things. When I heard Brother Joshua Farling telling us the statistics of what we do and where we spend most of our time on social media and what people are doing today, my heart was so grieved within me. I was so grieved within me because you see the enemy of your soul, the enemy of your soul is sending out uh, demons. He's sending out demons that's assigned to each one of you that's a born again child of God to frustrate your purpose and to get your mind off the things of God. And you know how he does it over here in Luke 21 and 34. He said, and take heed to yourselves, lest at any time your hearts be overcharged with suffiting and drunkenness and cares of this life, and so that day come upon you unaware. For as a snare shall it come upon all them that dwell on the face of the whole earth. Watch ye therefore, and pray always, that ye may be accounted worthy to escape all the things that shall come to pass, and stand before the Son of Man. Eating, and drinking, surviving means to eat. It means excessive eating and drinking. Our hearts are overcharged with the cares of this life. There's so much pressure on our jobs to perform. There's so much pressure in the world when you're doing simple things. There's so much pressure that everywhere you turn, our hearts are just overcharged with the cares of this life. Yeah. The cares of this life are choking out the things of God. Amen. And instead of going back to God and worshiping God and praising God, we're letting this thing called social media come between us and God. And I heard what they said on the videos how that we justify that it's a good thing. Yes, it is a good thing if you use it right. But if you take that thing and it becomes an idol to you when you get up in the morning and you have to look at it, when you have to look at it 24 hours a day and before you go to bed at night and some even wake up in the middle of the night and look at it, you tell me that that's not an idol? You tell me the Lord Jesus Christ, he said over there in Psalms that David, he said, I will sit in a wicked thing before mine eyes. And you see the devil is robbing us. Now we're living in a generation where people are smart. We're living in a generation where knowledge is abounding on every hand. But just like Brother Joshua said, who's to say that that knowledge is correct that we get off of social media? We better be sure Sure, before we repeat something, that if it doesn't line up with the Word of God and the King James Bible, we need to let that thing go. We don't need to repeat it. We don't need to tell anybody else about all this knowledge. Because you see, he said over there in Proverbs chapter 30 and verse 12, he said, there is a generation, all that does not honor their mother and father. There is a generation, all that is doing that, that which is right in their own eyes, that which is pure in their own eyes. But they have not been washed from the filthiness of the flesh. Oh, Daniel said, he said, Daniel, close up the book. He said, because there's going to come a time 
where they're running to and fro and knowledge is increasing. It's abounding on every hand. But we better be careful of the knowledge we get if we don't get some wisdom and understanding. He said the principal thing is to get wisdom. But with thy wisdom, get understanding. Oh, we were at a prayer meeting, me and Sister Barlow, Friday night and there was more people there than we expected over at the gone house and there was all kinds of spirits in that house there was all kinds of spirits that you could feel now you can feel if you have any discernment whatsoever if you have the Holy Ghost in you he said that anointing that's in you is going to teach you all things and it's going to show you all things I want you to know we were in the midst of some spirits that night and there was this young man that had a cell phone. Sister Betty Marlowe was singing. And she had a song that she wanted to sing. He Googles in that song. And he starts talking about that song. And when that song was wrote. And who wrote that song. And all this stuff. Uh, and while Sister Betty Marlowe was singing. And trying to get in the spirit. While we were talking about other things. He would Google that. And he would start telling us what that meant. And I thought, my, my. Here he's got all this knowledge, but he didn't know what to do with it. He had all this knowledge because he, he got it off social media and he could tell us all these things and they were facts, but that had nothing to do. He didn't have a born again relationship with Jesus Christ. And you know why did I know that? Because of what came out of his mouth and the spirit that he was of. There were spirits over there in that house and we literally had to pray Pray that God would help us get through because of all those spirits that was in that house. Deceiving spirits. Just because you have a knowledge of something and just because you have an understanding of something, if it's spiritually based in the Word of God and then you search out that knowledge, I'll listen to you. But if the foundation is removed and you're not going by the Word of God, then I don't want to hear it because it's man's opinion. It's man's opinion. And church, it's time. It's time that we paid attention to what we allow in our spirits uh, to overcharge us, uh, get our minds off of the things of God and building this temple. You see, Satan doesn't want you to build this temple. This temple, he doesn't want you to build he wants to leave this temple off. The Bible says, it says in Corinthians, I'm not sure where, but it says that if we neglect, no, it says, though the outward man perish, the inner man is renewed day by day. The outward man is going to die. But if we don't feed the inward man, if we don't, sup with the Lord Jesus Christ if we don't get into prayer if we don't get into intercessory prayer and praying in the Holy Ghost and keeping ourselves in the love of God we are not going to be able to overcome the onslaught of the spirits in these last days that's going to come up against us we might think that we have a knowledge that we can do certain things, but without the power of God, without the anointing of the Holy Ghost, without the power of God in us and running over in us, and we're full of the Holy Ghost so that when people see us, they're going to say, what in the world is wrong with those people? They act like they're drunk. They act like there's something mental wrong with them. And you see, that's exactly what I thought when I first came into the church. Oh, but little did I know, Brother Jason, when I got full of the Holy Ghost, I went home that night and I started praying and I said, Lord, I don't know what this stuff is. I said, but whatever it is, I want it. And I remember that night, I went home and I prayed all night long. And I want you to know at the break of day, at the break of day, something started happening to this old girl. Oh, I was laying there in the bed and I was praising the Lord and all of a sudden my hands just started going up on their own 
And they started going up. And I started hearing this weird language come out of my face and come out of my mouth. And all of a sudden, I'd quench it. And I'd get scared to death. But I want you to know the Holy Ghost kept moving on me. I kept praying. And as I prayed, oh, I would sing unto the Lord. And next thing I know, another spirit came in and I was worshiping the Lord in tongues and singing in tongues and praising the Lord. And I got some of that new wine. He cut on my son on my high. I got some of that new wine, and I knew the power that they had when they were jumping the pews. <laughs> I knew that kind of power that no human being. Can you imagine Brother Benazer at his age and a cane jumping the pews and going around from pew to pew and spinning around like a top? It's impossible. But under the anointing, hallelujah, under the anointing, oh, you're not going to get hurt under the anointing when the Holy Ghost is in you and full of the power of God. Don't you know that's what happened when they stoned Stephen? Oh, when they came and they ran upon Stephen, they bit him first. But then after they bit him, they stoned him. And you know what Stephen said? Stephen looked up to heaven. And guess what? Hallelujah. There was Jesus. He, the clouds rolled back and he saw Jesus. And Jesus was standing for Stephen. And he said, Father, lay not this sin to their charge. He said, forgive them because they don't know what they're doing. And the Bible said he fell asleep. He didn't die. He called out, Masina, Nana, Masina, Nana, Nana, Mahai. Oh, church, we're not going to die. We're just going to pass into life, uh, eternal life. Uh, I've read the back of the book, uh, and we win. Uh, we win. Uh, but it's time that we get radical. It's time that we act like a militant church. Uh, it's time that we get outside of the box uh, and let God outside of the box once again and let God do what God wants to do. And and stop trying to say, well, God's not in that. And God's not in that. God can work in any sanctified Holy Ghost vessel. And if you're clogged up this morning, then that means that the Spirit of the Lord can't work in you because He will not work in an unclean temple. The Holy Ghost will work in us if our temple is clean. If we're sanctified holy and we presented our bodies to the Lord as a living sacrifice and we say, Lord, here I am. It's a sacrifice to come to the house of God. It's a sacrifice to worship. And this flesh doesn't want to do it. But church, it's time we better, we better lay aside the flesh and say, oh God, I want revival for my survival I'm not smart enough and I'm not smart enough to do anything without the Lord but I know the Holy Ghost the third person of the Trinity that lives on the inside of me he's going to see me through he's going to help me that when I'm brought up before kings and when I'm brought up before smart people he's going to give me a mouth and words of wisdom and when you hear me speak, it won't be Sister Hargraves, but it'll be the Holy Ghost and it'll be the Word of God. Hallelujah! Because soon and very soon, our God's coming back. He's coming back after a perfected church. He's coming back after a holy people. But there is one thing that church we better start doing. He said over there in Timothy, this is what He wants us to do. Hallelujah! 1 Timothy 2 and 1 through 4. The same thing that got us on this road is the same thing that's going to get us through. 1 Timothy 2 and 1 through 4. I exhort thee, I exhort therefore, that first of all, supplications, prayers, intercessions, and giving of thanks be made for all men. That little word all means the total sum of. That means everything. The whole scope. Just like your pastor's been telling you. The whole picture. He said that be made for all men. 
for kings and for all that are in authority, that we may lead a quiet and peaceable life in all godliness and honesty. For this is good and acceptable in the sight of our God and Savior, who will have all men to be saved and come unto the knowledge of the truth. Hallelujah. We've got to get back to what we know works. We've got to get back to what we know works. There's nothing wrong with changing the methods, but we better be careful of what kind of methods that we draw from the kingdom and we bring it in to preach a church of God message and a holy inspired message of the Word of God. Sometimes those methods could taint the message. Now hear me. Hear me what I'm saying. There's nothing wrong with changing our methods if our methods are going to produce the same message. If they're going to pr produce the same message and get the same results. But if we want to bring something in, which I'm seeing in these last days, I'm seeing an influx of all kinds of ideas that people are bringing in from the kingdom and from other churches, the styles, the methods, the traditions, the things... Church, we are peculiar people. What's wrong with us? Uh, why don't we want to be peculiar? Why don't we want to stand out? Uh, my identity is that I'm peculiar. And peculiar doesn't mean that I'm crazy. But peculiar means uh, that I'm chosen of God. I don't want to be like the world. I don't want to act like the world. I don't want to do like the world. But I want to be set apart uh, for the Master. I don't want to blend in. I don't want to look look like the world and follow along with the world's method and secularism and humanism but I want to follow the Spirit He said that he that hath an ear to hear, let him hear what the Spirit is saying. It's time we got back to listening to what the Spirit says and not leaning to the arm of flesh and leaning to the arm of understanding Hallelujah Praise the Lord And church, it's going to take fervent prayer it's going to take something that has actually been proven and has worked. And it's going to work from here on out. No other way is going to take its place. I'm sorry. And that means that you're going to have to tarry. That means that you're going to have to say, Now flesh, look here. I don't know about you, but I'm tired of coming to church and hearing a good Holy Ghost message. And not being able to come and pray. Not being able to let the Holy Ghost work that thing in me. Not let the Spirit of God make it pliable in my spirit. He told Ezekiel, he said, eat the Word. He said, eat the Word. Get it in your mouth. Get it in your belly. Get it in your inward parts. Don't you know that most of the time when we preach a message on Sunday morning or Sunday night, that by the time you get to the door, the devil's already stole that seed. He's already stole that seed and it's gone. And you can't even remember when you get home and the cares of this life all oh, start taking in. Now what was that that Brother, Andrews preached, uh, Brother Ammons preached this morning? But you see, if you come to the altar... If you get down and you weep uh, and you let the Spirit of, of God oh, work that thing in you, uh, make that thing pliable in you uh, and get it in you and eat it. Uh, and some people, they just want to be like a cow. They just want to chew on that thing like they could. Just chew on it and chew on it and chew on it. And next thing you know, they spit it out. We can't afford to spit out the Word. Chew on it. Swallow it. Eat it. Get it on the inward part. Hallelujah. Let the Lord work that thing because the Word of God is sharp. It's powerful. It knows how to cut. It knows how to discern all the intent of the heart and the flesh. And He knows how to get it in us. Church, our altars are too dry. Oh, we've got to tarry. Tarry means to wait. When they were in the upper room on the the day of Pentecost. They were there ten days. Ten days. They weren't playing. They weren't 
on Facebook. They weren't with the social media. They weren't eating and drinking and laughing and carrying on. But they were in earnest prayer. They were in one mind. They were in one accord. They wanted the things of God. They were hungry for the things of God. Then all of a sudden, I guess on the 10th day, I'm not exactly sure of the timing, but the Bible said, like a mighty rushing wind moved in on them. Hallelujah. And they all started speaking with other tongues. And they saw fire dancing all up on their heads. I remember reading books, and I'm not sure if it was in A.J. A. Thomason's Lily Duggar book or if it was in Up on This Rock, but I remember times when A.J. Thomason would be out having services and they would call the fire department because they would see fire over the building and there was times that they would actually call the fire department thinking the building was on fire, but in actuality, it was the power of the Holy Ghost you know what I'm talking about oh these older folks know it's so sad to me that we as a generation and our age group has not passed it on to you oh what this Shekinah glory is oh God help us that Ichabod is written up over the door God help us if we're in that time like our sister preached about if we're there then God help us to get the spirit of Ebenezer again uh, because I don't want the glory of the Lord to stay out of the house. God's not going to sacrifice His glory on a people that's not going to sacrifice and praise and worship Him and yield to the moving of His Spirit. You've got to have your senses discerned to be able to know the difference of the moving of the Spirit. The Bible says strong meat belongs to them that are full age. Those that know how to handle the Word. And church, if you got a saved experience and you're not sanctified and you don't have the baptism of the Holy Ghost, you're not going to get this thing. You talk about enmity. You talk about being at odds. You ain't going to live long on a saved experience. You know why? Because the Bible says when an unclean spirit goes out of a man, he said he walks about in dry places. He walks about in dry places. Then he comes back to that house and he sees that house has been swept and garnished and clean. And then he goes over here and he gets seven more of his buddies. And he goes into that house and he said that state is worse then than what it was before. If you don't fill the house up and get totally sanctified and filled with the Holy Ghost, God's not going to sacrifice His glory in these last days on a people that will not sacrifice for Him and worship Him in spirit and in truth. All this revival that we're going to see, I truly believe it's going to be for the kingdom of God. I do not think the world's going to see this revival because it's contrary to what the Word says. He said, as it was in the days of Noah. How was it in the days of Noah? They were eating. They were drinking. They were marrying. They were given in marriage. They were building. Their minds weren't on the things of God. Their minds weren't, oh, well, I'm going to get saved. I'm thinking about getting saved. Their minds were on the things of this world. Their minds and their hearts, oh, they were making fun of Noah. They would go by and they would see Noah and they would mock him and say, you think it's going to rain? And they would mock him and see church the day, oh, that the rain came. Can you imagine the terror, oh, that hit people when they saw that first drop of rain? But then when it got down around the feet, then when it got down around the ankles, then when it got to the knees, and then when it got up, they realized that they were lost and there was nothing that they could do. Church, let's not be like that. In these last days, let's not be like that because as it was in the days of Noah, they were living their lives and not even worried when the day the floods came. Now that's what my Bible says, the King James Version. And I don't go by any other version. I just don't. Hallelujah. Y'all looking at me like I'm nuts, but 
It is the truth. It is the truth. And sometimes the truth is hard. It's hard to take. But oh, don't you know that in these last days, God's getting ready to do a wonderful work in His church. Don't you know that God's raising up a royal priesthood, a royal people that's going to stand up and say, yes, I know Jesus Christ. Yes, I'm a member of the body of Christ. Yes, I'm lifting up a standard. No, I don't want to run with you. The world thinks it's strange that we don't run with them. They think it's strange that we don't do the things that they do. But I'm a peculiar people. I've got royal blood flowing through my veins and the things that I used to do, uh, I no longer want to do because I am a new creature in Christ. And I want to show this world in these last days all oh, that we still have a Savior that loves them. A Savior all oh, that can free you from every bondage. A Savior that can break the chains to the guttermost to the uttermost. He called I was in the guttermost but now I'm saved to the uttermost. And I know that I'm saved because He lives in me. And I want to see this, uh, these souls in these last days come to God because that's what God is wanting. But church, we got to get unclogged. Whatever's clogging you up. I wasn't going to do this because I didn't want to take a lot of time, but I got to obey the Lord, brother. I got to obey God. Bear with me, please. I like to do things. I'm a visual person. They taught me this the first year at BTI. Would, you can uh, thank Brother Workheiser and Sister Connie Wilson for these things because these are the ideas, not this particular idea. But visuals help us a lot. Let's see if I can put this up here. Can you see what that says? Can you read that, y'all? Not good. Somebody read it out loud. What's got you clogged? What do you see here? Can anybody tell me what that is? No, no, no. Not all that. Tell me what you see in the picture. First of all, you see a lampstand. Is that not right? We see a lampstand. Turn with me over into Zechariah. Everybody know where Zechariah is? Zechariah 4. I wasn't going to do this, but I, I have to obey the Lord. I brought it, but I didn't want to take so much time. But you know what? All time belongs to God. It doesn't belong to us. It belongs to God. Zechariah 4 and 1 through 14. And the angel that talked with me came again and waked me as a man that is waking out of his sleep, and said unto me, What seest thou? And I said, I have looked, and behold, a candlestick all of gold, with a bowl up on the top of it, and his seven lampstands thereof, and seven pipes to the seven lamps, which are upon the top thereof, and two olive trees by it, one upon the right side of the bowl, and one upon the other side, one upon the other, upon the left side thereof. So I answered and spake to the angel that talked with me, saying, What are these, my Lord? Then the angel that talked with me answered and said unto me, Knowest thou not what these be? And I said, No, my Lord. Then he answered and spake unto me, saying, This is the word of the Lord unto Zerubbabel, saying, Not by might, nor by power, but by my spirit, saith the Lord of hosts, Who art thou, O great mountain, before Zerubbabel? Thou shalt become a plain, and he shall bring forth thy headstones thereof with shouting, crying, Grace, grace unto it. The hands of Zerubbabel have laid the foundation of this house. His hands shall also finish it, and thou shalt know that the Lord of hosts has sent me unto you. For who hath despised the day of small things? For they shall rejoice and shall see the plummet 
in the hand of Zerubbabel with those seven that are the eyes of the Lord, which run to and fro throughout the whole earth. I'm going to stop right there. I did this message in Florida when I was down there at Tallahassee. And the Lord inspired me. This is the candlestick that Zechariah saw. And these little things right here on top, those are, these are bowls. These are the golden bowls where the oil flows down each pipe. There's seven pipes. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. And the powers that be, the two olive trees, one was Zerubbabel and the other one was Joshua. They were the anointed ones that had a right to come and take the oil and pour it into the bowls to go in to the lampstand. And as the oil went through the lampstand, the pipes were very fine. They weren't real thick pipes, even though it looked, it looks like a menorah. But a menorah actually is bigger than just a lampstand. But this lampstand was in the temple for the light to continuously burn. And it was up to Zerubbabel and Joshua to keep the oil flowing from the bowls into these pipes. And everything that went into these pipes, it had to be pure, pure, unbeat, pure beaten olive oil for the light to shine. And it says here in Exodus 27 and 20, turn with me. Exodus 27 and 20. He said, And thou shalt command the children of Israel that they bring thee pure olive oil beaten for the light to cause the lamp to burn always. And you know why it had to be pure beaten olive oil? Because anything else that went through the lampstand, if it wasn't pure oil, it would clog up the lampstand because the pipes were so narrow. So when the oil would go through, it had to be fine oil, had to be clean oil, had to be pure oil in order for the lights to shine. And the powers that be at that time was Zerubbabel and Joshua. Hallelujah. Don't you know, church, today, uh, oh, that this vessel here, this vessel has got to be clean. Uh, it's got to be pure. There can't be any kind of contaminants whatsoever. Unforgiveness, uh, covetousness. Uh, oh, everything that I've got listed here, pride, offenses, uh, carnal-mindedness, uh, bitterness. Uh, don't you know that these things plug us up uh, and clog us up uh, and we get offended one of another. Oh, and we get offended at somebody's offense because they're offended. And we get clogged up. We stay on social media till we get the garbage. Have you ever heard that old adage that says you are what you eat? You are what you eat. In the natural, but in the spiritual. If you stay on Facebook all the time, if you stay on social media all the time, you're getting this garbage. Who's to say that that garbage is true? Who's to say if the Spirit of the Lord is not in it? I can tell when the Spirit of the Lord is in something and that gets into my system and it pollutes me and then I get a mindset uh, and then I get clogged up. Uh, oh, and then I go to thinking about things I'm not supposed to think about uh, and you see it impedes the moving of the Holy Ghost. Uh, if you had an argument with Brother Jim before you come to church this morning, you're going to hinder the service this morning if you come to church and you did something you weren't supposed to do you've clogged up everything to where the spirit of the Lord cannot move in this tabernacle and in this temple oh this is where we come to meet the Lord this is where we worship the Lord we go out there to serve the Lord but this is where we come and the presence of the Lord and his word wants to engulf us and he wants to strengthen us but we're 
so clogged up. Uh, our hearts are so overcharged with the cares of this life uh, that we don't even know what is really going on. Uh, and we're going through a form. Uh, and we're going through a fashion. And we're doing all the things that we know to do. But the Spirit of the Lord is no longer here. And we're not sensitive uh, that when the Spirit is here, all oh, that we'll get up and walk out when the Spirit is moving. Oh, God, help us. I hate it when the Holy Ghost is moving and people want to get up and leave and they want to get up and talk. Oh, don't you understand that it's going to hurt the Holy Ghost's feelings? He cannot move if your mind is not on Him. He cannot move if you're not worshiping Him. And all these distractions is to stop the moving of the Spirit, to stop you from getting what you need to grow in the Lord stopping you from getting what it is that you need from God hallelujah church it's time we got unclogged get unclogged from the things of the world oh let's get back to a good old fashioned holy ghost prayer good old fashioned tearing at the altar and weeping don't rend your clothes don't rip your clothes off all the way the children of Israel did and the Pharisees but he said rend your hearts rip your hearts out and cry and weep for me weep for souls because souls are dying souls are hanging in the balance and your soul could be one of them especially if you don't have the Holy Ghost especially if you don't know if you're born again especially if you don't know if your name's written in the Lamb's book of life God help us it's going to be too late it's going to be too late when the trumpet sounds and the Lord comes back. And you ain't going to have time to go out and buy oil. Now. Now it's time to get an oil change. Here. Here's when we can get an oil change. We can get an oil change this morning. And we can have that pure Holy Ghost oil. Oh, flowing through us uh, to cleanse us uh, and wash us from everything uh, so that when God says arise and go for the work is not yet finished uh, we will arise hallelujah and we'll go and we won't question the Lord but we'll pack up uh, and we'll say okay God where do you want us to go? Hallelujah. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Oh, praise the Lord. What a mighty God. What a mighty God that God has given us time now, church. Oh, to get it right. Go back to what works. Go back to what you know. Don't bring any more new methods in, but go back to what we know and seeking out the old paths. It's hard sometimes to get down in the flesh. I don't know about you, but I have to buffet my flesh every day. It's hard to get down in the flesh and actually pray. My body hurts. Everything I got hurts. But I know if I sacrifice it and I get down to pray, I know that I can start out in the flesh. I know that I can pray and start serving the Lord and talking to God. But one strange thing happens as I'm down praying, as I'm down talking to the Lord. I might be talking to the Lord in the natural, but next thing I know, there is another heavenly language. Oh, that starts to pray for me. The Spirit of truth. Oh, that starts to pray for me and searching out the deep things of God. He Oh, it reminds me of that stealth bomber. Oh, that the army's got in place. They've got a stealth bomber and that thing, it flies below the radar and they can go into all parts of the country and they won't be detected. And you see, they can pick up things and they can know things. Don't you know when you start out in the flesh and when you're praying you can kick over and I tell you what the Holy Ghost he's like that stealth bomber he's that secret radar that we can fly beneath the radar and Satan can't understand what the Spirit is saying hallelujah but you're praying to God and God is talking to you and the Spirit
spirit of truth is putting something in you. Oh, he's putting something into you that can't, that Satan cannot steal. Because you see, there's one thing he can't do. He can imitate tongues. He can imitate salvation. But he can't imitate sanctification. And if he gets to you, he's going to have to walk through the blood. Hallelujah. And he ain't going to walk through the blood. Because he's got better sense than that. It's time that we shook up uh, the kingdom of darkness uh, the way that we used to. Uh, oh, when I first got saved, uh, we bombarded hell. We bombarded hell with prayer. We bombarded over Satan's kingdom. And we prayed and we prayed until victory come. Oh, but church today, people are not praying enough. Uh, and you know why? No, because darkness is overtaking the world. Darkness is overtaking God's people. And if people were praying enough, the glory of God would come back. The glory of God would be here in the midst. It's time we did some harm to Satan's kingdom instead of letting him do harm to the kingdom of God. It's time we raised up and said the violent, all the children of God, we've got to press in to the kingdom of God and we've got to be violent about it. We've got to take it by force. Don't you know somebody prayed for me. Somebody had to intercede for me in that kind of prayer because of the sin that I was in. Because of the sin. I couldn't get out, brother, just like you said. I was so bound by those things. Bound. Didn't know I was bound. Lost and undone. And didn't know I was lost and undone. Because I was a Jehovah Witness. People would ask me, well, where do you go to church? Oh, I'm a Jehovah's Witness. Like that was some sort of badge. And I wore it very proudly. But guess what? I smoked. I drank. Did everything. They don't have any doctrine except a damnable doctrine. A damnable doctrine that will take your soul to hell and deceive you. Oh, but God. God is saying, church, let's get unclogged this morning. Let's get unclogged and let the Holy Ghost move freely through this temple. Move freely all oh, through this vessel so that God and the gifts can work through you. How many of you remember when I first got saved? It's the strangest thing. God taught me how to go out into the woods. And when I first got saved, he'd, he'd say, go out in the woods. And I'd go out in the woods and I'd walk around and he'd say, pray. I'd be by an old tree or a stump or something. He'd say, get down and pray. Well, I'd get down and pray. And I'd start praying. I'd be out in the woods. And the Lord said, I want you to make an altar and I want you to come out here every day. I said, huh? I didn't know what that was. But he said, do it. So I did it. Every day, the Lord would lead me. Go out into the woods. Pray. Go out into the woods. So I learned to pray. I learned to pray in the Spirit. Don't you know that Jesus had to steal away Oh, from the crowds. He had to steal away and go talk to the Father and pray in order to get strength to give to the people. You can't just keep pouring out and not have in yourselves, but you've got to put it back. And church, if we're going to win this world in these last days, we've got to have that power once again. Oh, my son, on my shy. Oh, glory, Father, in the name of Jesus, Lord. God, we come to you this morning. God, we ask for your word to take root in us, God. We ask, God, for the spirit of the Holy Ghost to move and manifest. Oh, church, I want to call us to an altar right now. I feel like God has said all he wants to do. The spirit wants to see and talk to us this morning. I want an altar call this morning. I want us to pray and seek the face of God and get our face out of Facebook, but get our face in the book. Sunday. Oh, come this morning and let's seek the Lord. Glory.